Good afternoon, and I'm going to be talking about electronic voting. And the idea we're going to share is the innovation that we've created in our lab. So this begins with the infamous butterfly ballot, as you see on the screen. Some of you may remember this from the year 2000, and this ballot forever changed voting in the United States of America. If you don't remember this, maybe this will help you. <laughs> the hanging chad. So in the year 2000, you have probably heard about hanging chads. And the issue here is that the voter's intent may not have been accurately captured. Did the person intend to vote for that individual because the chad is hanging? Well, you don't know, but even worse than the hanging chad is the pregnant chad. What is the intent of this? We really don't know. So to illustrate how difficult this is, imagine trying to count a ballot under these circumstances. I mean, that is just humanly impossible to get anything that's really accurate. In addition to this, after 2000, we saw events not only with the butterfly ballot, but things that said, what if I am disabled? What if I'm a veteran? How do I vote? So we saw a movement to create machines that were accessible. And so in the precinct, one set of people will vote on this machine, the other set on that machine. But what happens to a person who can't see, or a person in a wheelchair, or a person who doesn't have arms like this gentleman? How would they vote? Well, my research team, we started this project called Prime 3, Premier Third Generation Voting Technology. And thanks to the United States Election Assistance Commission and the National Science Foundation, we were able to create a technology that solves some of these problems. And we will be using this in, uh, in Oregon in May, actually. So let's take a look at an example. So I'll begin with Jessica here who's going to vote on its election day. And Dakita comes out to help her. So Dakita's the poll worker. And it starts with a single sheet of paper that is put into the printer. And so you can bring it up, switch the screen, so people can see what the interface looks like. So she starts it. And this process is going to take a single sheet of paper. You put it into the machine. And the poll worker is going to initiate voting. And what's happening is loading. So here we go. To start voting, say vote. Turn it up. Vote. Select it. Start voting. There are nine contests for voting. To change your settings, say vote. To vote by party, say vote. vote. To vote for president and vice president, say vote. Selected, U.S. Senate. You are vote. Selected, vote by party. You selected, the blue party. To go to the next contest, say vote. Selected, Proposition 1. You are voting for Proposition. Selected, yes. Se selected, accept. To go to the next contest. Selected, review my ballot. This is your ballot summary. You have voted in all eight contests. You selected Joseph Barkey and Joseph Halloran. Thank you. Your ballot is being printed. So let me walk you through what you just seen. Jessica is voting by touching the screen, and she can vote with her voice by saying vote in response to those prompts. And then it prints a ballot, unlike the hanging chad, that only contains the contest and the individual for whom you selected. So what does this mean? This means if you can't see, if you can't hear, if you can't read, if you don't have arms, you can privately and independently vote on the same machine as anyone else by using your voice or by touching the screen or even simply just blowing into the microphone. 
This is the technology we created, and again, this is called Prime 3. So now let's do another example that makes voting a little more simple. What if we have a scenario where Aquasia here, who's going to vote, it's the week before the election. And what we're going to demonstrate now is called balloting. The idea is that Aquasia is going to fill out her ballot a week before the election. So in this case, uh, she's at home on her computer, or actually on her cell phone, and she pulls up her ballot and she fills it out. And this is her review screen, so she's going to submit it. And now what, she see, what you see there is a QR code that represents her ballot, her selections. And that same code is sent to her phone. So now it's election day, and Hannon here is the poll worker, and Aquasia shows up to vote. And she tells Hannon, so I did this at home first, meaning I was at home and I went through the balloting process. So what's going to happen is uh, Hannon's going to take the sheet of paper, put it in the voting machine, and then Aquasia is actually going to be able to hand her her phone, or she could have brought the printout of the QR code, and they're going to scan it. And then from there, they'll be able to finish the voting process. So, okay, now she uh, scanned it in. And Windows is catching her scan. And when it scans, what actually happens, the code is read into the system, and the system will take the code and pull up the review screen of the ballot. Just enter the code. Try that. So Windows was catching her scan. So what happens is it logs in and it brings up the review screen. To start voting, say vote. And in this case, she logs in. To start voting, say vote. Selected. Vote by party. And she's you are doing voting what Jessica by party. did. Selected. Now. The blue. P Selected. Proposition 1. Selected. Yes. Selected. Selected. Ex Selected. Review my ballot. This is the review screen. This is your ballot summary. So now. What would happen voted in all is with contests. the QR code, you get the review you screen. You selected Joseph Barkey and Joseph Halloran for president and vice president. And she could actually change her vote. Selected. Amendment 1. Ballot measure 1. Continue. You are voting for amendment. And submitted. Selected. Review my... Thank you. Your ballot is being printed. So with this QR code approach, if I was her boss, which I am, and I said I needed you to vote a certain way, I could give her a QR code and she could go in, but I can't guarantee that she voted the way that I want it because it just brings it up and allows her to modify it. We believe this approach will actually reduce the amount of time it takes to vote and number of errors and enable people with various levels of ability or disability to be on an equal playing ground by having a single voting machine that enables everyone to vote on the same machine. And this is Prime 3, and this technology will be demonstrated in Oregon in May and in other demonstrations in the United States. Thank you.